In this Easy Ed video lecture, we are going to see an introduction to engineering mechanics, wherein we learn the meaning of mechanics, its classification, basic concepts in mechanics, the various types of forces, basic laws used in engineering mechanics, and the system of units used in mechanics. Definition of mechanics In today's world, the planning, designing, and construction of different types of structures and machines like bridges, multi-storied buildings, aircrafts, robots, etc. is done by engineers. This is done by using the principles of mechanics. The word mechanics was coined by Sir Isaac Newton. He defined mechanics as the branch of science which deals with the study of physical state of bodies at rest and in motion under the action of forces. Classification of Mechanics Mechanics is divided into two main parts, mechanics of solids and mechanics of fluids. Mechanics dealing with behavior of solids is called solid mechanics. Examples of solid mechanics are buildings, bridges, cars, etc. The study of motion and forces on the fluids that is both liquids and gases is termed as fluid mechanics. Examples of fluid mechanics are air coming out from the air conditioner, waves in water, etc. Mechanics of ideal fluids, mechanics of viscous fluids and mechanics of incompressible fluids are further classifications in this field. Mechanics of solid is further classified as mechanics of rigid bodies and mechanics of deformable bodies. In mechanics of rigid bodies, we study those bodies in which deformation is negligible or equivalent to zero under the action of forces. Mechanics of deformable bodies studies the deformation of bodies under the action of forces. In the example shown, the metal box is a rigid body, whereas the paper box is a deformable body. Mechanics of deformable bodies is further divided into strength of materials, theory of elasticity and theory of plasticity. In our course, we shall learn only about mechanics of rigid bodies. Rigid body mechanics is further branched into statics where the state of the body is at rest and dynamics where the body is in motion. A building is a static object whereas a moving car is a dynamic object. Dynamics is further divided into kinematics, in which we do not consider the forces responsible for motion and kinetics, where we consider the forces responsible for motion. Consider a football rolling on the ground. When we only consider this motion without considering the forces responsible for this motion, it is called kinematics. On the other hand, if we consider a boy who kicks the ball, thus applying a force after which the ball starts rolling, it is called as kinetics. Next, we will learn about the basic concepts involved in mechanics. They are length, time, mass, weight, momentum, rigid body, deformable body and force and its characteristics. Length is a concept to measure linear distances. In short, it is just the distance between any two points. Time helps us to study the occurrence of events. For example, Earth's rotation around its own axis takes a time of one day equal to 24 hours. Mass is the quantity of matter contained in a body. Mass is independent of the gravitational force and always remains the same for a body. On the other hand, weight is the force with which any mass containing body is attracted towards the center of the earth due to gravity. Therefore, weight always acts vertically downwards. In simple words, weight is the product of a body's mass and the gravitational pull acting on it. On the surface of the earth, this pull is found to be 9.81 meter per second square. Consider an astronaut whose mass is 120 kilograms. The mass will be the same on the earth as well as anywhere in space. On the other hand, his weight on earth would be equal to 1177.2 newtons, that is, 
the product of his mass and the gravitational pull. But in space, his weight would be zero, as there is no gravity in space. Therefore, he would float in outer space. Momentum is defined as the measure of the motion of a moving body. The product of mass and velocity is called momentum. Consider two automotive vehicles, a bus and a car traveling along a plain road. If both the car and the bus have the same velocity, which one can be stopped first? Of course, it is difficult to stop the bus compared to a car. What is the reason for this? Well, they both have the same speed, but different masses. This happens as the bus has more mass as compared to the car, because of which the momentum or measure of motion of the bus is also more than that of the car. Hence, much more effort is needed to stop the bus in comparison to a car travelling at the same velocity. Rigid body is defined as a body in which deformation is negligible or equivalent to zero under the action of applied forces. For example, if a small boy hits a table, the table does not break. In this case, it is a rigid body. Points A and B are the original position in a body. After application of two forces, F1 and F2, the body takes a new position. A dash and B dash are the new positions of A and B. If the body is treated as rigid, the relative position of A dash B dash and AB are the same, that is AB is equal to A dash B dash. In the real world, no object or body is rigid. Many engineering problems can be solved by assuming rigid bodies. A deformable body is a physical body that deforms, meaning it changes its shape or volume while being acted upon by an external force. For example, if the above table is punched by a karate teacher, it will be shred into pieces, thus showing deformation. Deformation may be brought about in a number of ways, namely permanent or temporary, instantaneous or continuous. Hey, it's time to concentrate now. A force is an action of one body on another body. A force is exerted only when there is an actual contact between the two bodies. For example, a man hitting a nail with a hammer. Any force is completely defined only when its four characteristics, namely magnitude, point of application, line of action and direction are specified. Consider a cricket match is being played between two school teams, A and B. Team A needs six runs to win of one ball, and their star player, XYZ, is on strike. If XYZ wants to hit the ball for a six, he should hit it with adequate force with the point of application, being the middle of the bat, while considering a suitable line of action in the intended direction. If all the above conditions are followed, only then would XYZ be able to hit the ball with sufficient force so as to clear the field and win the match. The main types of forces are discussed as follows. A tensile force. A tensile force is an applied force that tends to pull an object apart. For example, ropes cables, strings attached to bodies come under tensile forces. A compressive force. A compressive force is an applied force that tends to compress an object. Suspension springs used in automobiles come under compressive force. Force acting on any object so as to slice through it or to deform it permanently is called as a shear force. Shear forces act in a direction parallel to the surface. Bending force. A force that acts to bend an object by putting one side of the part in tension and the opposite side in compression is known as bending force. If an applied force on a member tends to bend the member, it is said to be in bending, also known as flexure. Frictional force. 
frictional force is developed when there is a motion or tendency of motion of one body with respect to the other body involving rubbing of surfaces of contact. Frictional force always opposes the direction of motion. Frictional forces are developed between tires of a car and a road when the car tries to move over the surface of the road. This frictional force opposes the motion of the car due to the weight of the car and the nature of the surfaces, the car's tires and the road in contact. Now we will take a look at the basic laws of mechanics. Newton's first law. This law says that an object remains at rest or moves in a straight line with constant velocity if the net force on it is zero. This law is often called the law of inertia. Inertia of a body is its inability to move until forces are applied. If one slides a ball along the floor, it doesn't move forever. It slows and eventually comes to a stop. But according to Newton's first law, this is because a force is acting on the ball and sure enough, there is frictional force between the floor and the ball. And this frictional force is in the direction opposite to motion. It is this force which causes the object to slow to a stop. In the absence of such a force, as approximated by the ball, the ball's motion would not slow. Consider a ball kept aside on a table. It will be in this state of rest unless it is acted by an external force. If we push the ball, it moves ahead. Seriously, pay attention. This is important. Newton's second law of motion. According to Newton's second law of motion, the rate of change of momentum of a body is directly proportional to the impressed force and it takes place in the direction of the force acting on it. But momentum can be expressed in terms of mass and velocity. As mass of an object does not change, we can further express rate of change of velocity as acceleration. Thus, we find that force applied is directly proportional to the mass of the body and its acceleration. Hence, Acceleration is produced when a force acts on a mass. For example, consider a man shopping at a supermarket. It is easier for him to push an empty shopping cart than a full shopping cart. Thus, from Newton's second law, we can conclude that more force must be applied to a larger mass in comparison to a smaller mass in order to accelerate an object. Newton's third law of motion states that for every action there is equal and opposite reaction. When we fire a bullet from a gun, the gun pushes us behind immediately after firing. This recoil seen in guns, rifles, cannons, etc. is an example of this law. According to Newton's law of gravitation, each and every mass in the universe exerts a mutual attractive gravitational force on every other mass in the universe. This force is found to be proportional to the product of the two masses and inversely proportional to the distance between the two objects. The mathematical expression for this law is shown. For example, consider the elliptical orbit of the moon around the earth. This follows the Newton's universal law of gravitation. Both the moon and the earth constantly try to attract each other via gravity. But due to their orbital velocities, they do not deviate from their path and follow it eternally. The law of transmissibility of forces states that if the point of application of force acting on a rigid body is transmitted to act at any other point along its line of action, the state of equilibrium or motion of the rigid body will remain unchanged. Consider the door of your classroom. When you try to push it from one side, force is applied. The door opens. In the same scenario, if we try to pull the door from the other side with the same force along the same line of action, the result will still be the same. This shows that changing the position of the force along its line of action would have no effect on the final outcome. 
The system of units extensively used in this course is the SI unit system. Length, mass and time are the basic units in mechanics. The units of all other quantities may be expressed in terms of these basic units. The major quantities used in mechanics along with their SI units are as shown. The table also displays the symbols for the various units. Also, when some quantities are too big or too small, we use certain prefixes. They are as follows. The table gives us the names and symbols of the prefixes. In mechanics, we regularly use a number of Greek letters to denote certain quantities. Some common Greek letters and their names are as follows. Let's have a quick review of what we have studied in this lecture. Sir Isaac Newton defined mechanics as a branch of science which deals with study of physical state of bodies at rest and in motion under the action of forces. It is classified as follows. Length is just the distance between any two points. Time helps us to study the occurrence of events. Mass is the quantity of matter contained in a body. Weight is the force with which any mass containing body is attracted towards the center of the earth. Momentum is defined as the measure of the motion of a moving body. A body is said to be rigid if the relative positions of any two particles in it do not change under the action of the forces. A deformable body is physical body that deforms, meaning it changes its shape or volume while being acted upon by an external force. We also studied that force is an action of one body on another body. Any force is completely defined only when its four characteristics, namely magnitude, point of application, line of action and direction are specified. Next, we learned about the different types of forces, namely tensile force is an applied force that tends to pull an object apart. A compressive force is an applied force that tends to compress an object. Force acting on any object so as to slice through it or to deform it permanently is called as a shear force. A force that acts to bend an object by putting one side of the part in tension and the opposite side in compression is known as bending force. Frictional force is developed when there is a motion or tendency of motion of one body with respect to the other body involving rubbing of surfaces of contact. Next, we learned about the fundamental laws in mechanics. Newton's first law states, an object remains at rest if originally at rest or moves in a straight line with constant velocity if the net force on it is zero. According to Newton's second law, acceleration is produced when a force acts on a mass the greater the mass of the object being accelerated, the greater the amount of force needed to accelerate the object. Newton's third law of motion states that for every action there is an equal and opposite reaction. According to Newton's law of gravitation, each mass attracts every other mass in the universe by a mutual gravitational force. The law of transmissibility of forces states that if the point of application of force acting on a rigid body is transmitted to act at any other point along its line of action, the state of equilibrium or motion of the rigid body will remain unchanged. Then we learned about the system of units used in mechanics. These are the major quantities and the units used in mechanics. Also we saw the important prefixes used when the quantities are either too big or too small. We also saw the commonly used Greek letters in mechanics.